our treasurer. Uh, Robin Reed is in the back. She's our parks um, chair. And uh, Victor Bromia, our ZLC chair. So um, we have uh, at least of we are being uh, we are being taped by Matt Conti of northernwaterfront.com tonight. Um, we have uh, I don't know if we have any other members of the, any other members of the press present. No, guess not. Uh, we have uh, Anthony Caldarelli from uh, Councilor Asaidi George's office. Any other um, public officials or representatives? Of the press officials? Not okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I just first like to start by announcing that we have an agenda change. Uh, we are not having the Marquee Health Services present on the notice of going to be with some miscommunication as to when they actually might be here. So, uh, that means that we get out early. So, that's the nursing home, I think, you know, they wanted to come and just kind of give a public discussion about what they intend to do, but I think the really important question about the nursing home uh, is will the deconstruction remain on that property, and that's what we don't know the answer to. I think that uh, Victor, our ZLC chair, intends to follow up on that, as do some other people, and that answer will not come from the marquee people, but that will really come from the PRA. Um, I would also like to announce that we are going to need a nominating committee. We have our elections next month. Uh, if there is anyone interested in being on the nominating committee, please let me know. Uh, also, if you are interested in serving, and, um, and, and as an officer and the executive team, please let me know. Uh, right now, uh, we do not have a candidate for the office of treasurer, and so we're particularly interested in that. But in, in reality, it is an open election. Anyone can run for any spot. So if you have any interest, please let me know about that. Um, have, I'm just going to bring to your attention, and this is on, our, on the back of the agenda, that uh, we are having our annual party November 9th uh, at the Pilot House. We are going to be starting with an abbreviated meeting at 6 o'clock, and then we will go right into the party. And we are hoping that we will also get some people who might be interested in meeting the members to come to that meeting. That's the party. Uh, another thing that we are going to be doing, and we've taken some inspiration from our parks committee, which did a great job of doing a tree inventory for the event, we would like to start an Airbnb inventory for the event. Um, I have been hearing more and more from people who are saying, you know, I've noticed that the building next door to me, the building across from me, is now uh, turned into an Airbnb. Um, I don't think that there is anyone in the city that I'm aware of that is keeping track of these things. Uh, I'm aware just in my immediate neighborhood of two buildings which have recently sold, which are already operating as clearly as Airbnbs, and all the people with the rolling suitcases are coming up at all hours. And um, it's really proliferating, and it's really taking uh, rentals out of, the, out of circulation in the neighborhood. So it's something we're going to need to address, but I think it's also something we're going to need to document. I don't think that um, the city right now is interested in helping us do that, but I think it, we will be getting a new city councilor. Hopefully it will be someone who will be interested in working with us on this, and it would be nice to have some uh, documentation as to what's going on now. This is an issue that needs to be addressed. So uh, we don't have a formal way of uh, taking this information on our website now. Hopefully we will be working on our website, but in the meantime, informally, I think if people um, know of places and we just want to pass on that information, you can contact us at the platform at least to start on this, that information. Um, 
I would like to uh, move on uh, to parks and open space. Uh, Robin Reed does not have a report this month, but Tom Schiavone has a report on another park, in a uh, particular park, which is the Topsail Cemetery Board, and he would just like to say a few words about that. Thank you. Um, uh, the Friends of Copse Hill have been maintaining, helping to maintain the uh, burying ground for about 28 years now. And uh, because of the habitat disruption on commercial Hall and Snow Hill streets, and I imagine this is playing out in other parks and along other corridors that, that had intense uh, uh, construction in the, in the roads, uh, the rats have chose to move to higher ground. Um, and maybe better digs. Uh, they, they're getting rid of their basement apartment and they're moving up the stairs. Um, I'm joking, but I'm not, because my neighbors have said that, at least in the Copps Hill area, between 5 and 6.30 on Monday mornings and Friday mornings, it's smorgasbord uh, for the, uh, the rodents. And uh, we're seeing now holes, and I've never, we've lived here for 43 years, and I have never, these are like prairie dog holes uh, that are coming into the burying ground. Uh, I've called Parks Department. Um, I want to put in a kind word. Uh, the burying ground initiative that has immediate jurisdictional, uh, she uh, frankly sounded very frustrated. She said, why don't you dial 311 and have your neighbors dial? And I said to her, Excuse me, um, you have a commissioner, there's cabinet level meetings between ISD and the Parks Department and the other. That's the way to deal with it, uh, but she maintained that's not the way to deal with it. The only thing they understand are 311 calls. But the point is that this is, I'm not advocating just for the park. If they're moving up, I, again, these are uh, phenomenon that I have not seen in four decades uh, and uh, some of the neighbors said uh, it, it really does get incredible and this is playing out with the way garbage is put out the night before and some some folks in Copps Hill area along the streets are putting flyers saying be a good neighbor please wait until the morning at any rate uh, what you could do because you're not doing it just for Copps Hill <clears throat> you're doing it for, I imagine, other parks, but other places that have highly trafficked uh, by these critters. You have to just dial 311. She said the more people that dial 311, if you get 20, 30, 40 calls, then it bubbles to the top. This is a, a, a little aside. Uh, there is a, a method using dry ice that was tried and people thought very successfully. Apparently that was deemed to be a, a hazardous waste material. Now when I was a kid uh, we used to uh, catch uh, dry ice from the popsicle man and uh, I don't think any of us came down with anything uh, serious. The point is that uh, the city thinks that they're bound to use the traditional use of rat poisoning. So. Whether, whether you're at the dry ice or, or rat poison, the traditional, I think the city has finally got to take a stand. You can call the Freedom Trail Foundation. You wouldn't, but I would, and I know what the answer would be. Uh, that's not our jurisdiction. So I, this is one of the things where I think some social media could really help. Uh, and the, the only thing you have to do is either email or uh, just dial 311. And again, you're not just protecting Copps Hill Bearing Ground. I think you're taking care of the rest of uh, the North End. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I'm now going to call on our Sergeant Norman Hall to all for your compliments about the logo. There's a big team of us that worked on that and got it right. We're really thrilled that everybody likes it. And now we're working on the website and we're going to update it so that it's optimized and you can see it on your smartphone so it fits nicely. And there'll be all kinds of information, places you can click on to get more information. But it'll be really simple. And if you need like old documents, things like that, you can let us know and we can send them to you. But it'll be a nice clean website with our new logo. Thanks. Um, yeah. And then we call on uh, Victor Droya for the ZLC report, and we have also asked Victor to talk a little bit about what's happening with the licenses in the city. Just give us an update on that. Okay, sure. Thank you, Mary. 
uh, zoning licensing and construction first. The next meeting uh, is the 26th, Tuesday the 26th, and it's going to be at 6 o'clock instead of at 7 because it's also election day. And uh, we thought that um, people who haven't been able to vote during the day may want to vote at night. <coughs> the item that's going to be on it, I'll tell you about in a minute, is probably non controversial, so may last half an hour, which will give you plenty of time between 6.30 and 8 o'clock to vote. The item is 431 to 439 Hanover Street, which is a real estate office, and they are, sorry, they are uh, seeking to expand their office space into the basement, which uh, requires a, a zoning variance. It's so surprising to me that this use in the basement in the uh, it's but it's not a multi-family residential. But anyway, it does require that. So uh, the attorney is uh, Dan Toscano, and further details can be obtained through him. And otherwise, come at 6 o'clock, and uh, we'll get more details about 431 and 439 Hadworth Street moving into the basement. Um, the next item I want to mention is Four Powers Court, where there is a banner across the building uh, saying we are adding a fourth floor and basically what looks like a penthouse on the basement. I say what looks like because there's a, a, an elevation that tells you on the banner what it's it doing there. It was, I was tipped off to it by a member of Nura uh, who was sitting close to me. Uh, and uh, why, why don't we know about it? Well. Apparently, there was a zoning variance granted by the licensing, uh, by the, uh, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals in 2012. And under the uh, uh, special act of the legislature that set up Austin zoning, and under the zoning code itself, uh, zoning variances expire in two years if they're not used. Why is this uh, going forward with an expired? zoning there. Also, the banner has a, the number of a building permit. The building permit expired as well. Uh, I have had numerous <coughs> communications back and forth with, uh, with ISD, and it appears, it appeared today, that I just learned that the Zoning Board of Appeals extended the life of the zoning variances. Uh, in 2015, and I haven't had a chance to see whether that's possible to do under the uh, under the code. In the past, I haven't seen that, but uh, I will take a look. And if it's not, I'll write another letter and say, by what authority did you extend the expired zoning variance? But it's a little frustrating. I, I have a sense that from the Top down, ISD is being told, make it easy for every, anyone who wants to do anything. And uh, those of us who think adherence to what regulations is an important thing have an uphill fight. Uh, the final thing I, I want to mention is liquor licenses. Uh, that is zoning licensing, we do get interested in that. Um, and I have distributed a copy of the Boston Bulletin article June 29th, and the reason that this is September is we've had uh, packed agendas, and this is the first time we've been able to uh, get off into this. Um, I knew nothing about this. I happened to see this at the Santander uh, ATM booth, and thank goodness that the Boston Bulletin wrote a, an extensive uh, article about it. Apparently, the city, uh, being motivated by Councilor Anna Presley, who was who accomplished the expansion of liquor licenses a couple of years ago, wants to do more. Uh, she wants to add 152 over the next three years. She wants the, the motivation for that, she says, is that there are areas of the city that need economic uh, advancement and that uh, liquor licenses in restaurants helps that. So 
there is specified Dorchester, East Boston, Hyde Park, Jamaica Plain, Mattapan, Mitchell, Mission Hill, and Roxburgh being specific targets. However, 30 for citywide use, which means it could be North End. The last time around, we got some. Maybe this time we will. Uh, I'd like to just get a conversation going so that uh, City Hall hears it. Uh, they haven't asked for it, but I think we'd like to uh, tell them that we would like to be heard. Will there be any public meetings discussing this? I don't know. No one has told me that this has happened. And as I say, I wouldn't know about it if I hadn't seen this. Um, I'd like to suggest three items, put three items into the conversation. One is the difference between fine dining and booze joints. Uh, there are those who take the position that fine dining restaurants should have all alcohol licenses. Uh, I'm not taking a position, I'm just suggesting that, that it's something to consider. But how do we distinguish, and how does the licensing, licensing board distinguish fine dining and booze joints? Uh, one way, I suggest, is the number of seats at the bar. I know the restaurants say that people now who are eating alone want to eat at the bar. But I just walked by the Italian canteen. They have only eight seats at the bar. And they were able to operate a profitable business. They opened a new restaurant, Furies. So I don't think restricting number of seats at the bar in order to promote fine, fine dining is, should cause an economic problem to a restaurant. So I'd suggest that as something uh, as to be part of the conversation. Uh, another item is um, the closing hour. I don't know any fine dining restaurants in the North End that close or that continue fine dining and can close beyond, and close beyond 11. Uh, the licensing board uh, rules and regulations say that you have to get glasses off the table half an hour later, so 11 o'clock would mean 11.30. And of course what we're talking about is balancing um, uh, liquor and uh, the quality of residential life. So perhaps these licenses, if any go to the North End, should not go to restaurants that close beyond 11 o'clock. And finally, something was suggested to me by someone in the real estate business, I can come up with this. Uh, how about the square footage devoted to um, customers. And I thought about it as, as I walked by um, the, the Four Seasons Hotel and the Bristol Restaurant. If you look in the window, you will see large tables, widely spaced. And that, to me, is one of the aspects of fine dining. She could not restrictions be put on restaurants that they could not serve or have more than a certain number of seats per square foot or a certain number of square feet per seat uh, to uh, enhance the, the dining experience. Those are the three thoughts that I would like to put into the conversation and get a conversation going and let City Hall know that we would like to know what's going on and we would like to participate. And that concludes the CLC report. Unless there are questions. Well, isn't that the responsibility of our city councilors to let us know what's going on? Well, I would think so. Sarah so, Martinez retired now, I'll wait for another one? Yes. yes. Well, he's still our city councilor. <coughs> yeah. yeah. But, Lame duck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he's mentioned in this article <coughs> to the city council. Salvatore La Martina said the fact that the city needs a home rule petition that is commissioned by the legislature uh, is ridiculous. So apparently he was aware of this. Uh, and we have. So, anybody else have any comments or questions? Or? Okay. This is clearly something that we're going to have to uh, take action on or take a position on because the last go round, if this does go through, we ended up with way more than our fair share. And this is, keeps being presented as something for economic development and uh, you know to help the little guy. And in fact, you know, it comes into saturated areas and seems to go to people who are well established and have 
multiple establishments. So uh, I'm not sure you know, what the benefit is. Certainly not a benefit to the residents of this neighborhood. So, um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Victor. So, so, so uh, what yes. happens next, Victor? Uh, I didn't know this was happening. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 is this something that you're going to watch? Or you, like, well, yes, I guess what I, what I should do is probably email Ayanna Presley and say, what's going on, and please keep me informed. What, what's the status now, and as it changes, let me know. Are you going to have public meetings? If so, when, let me know. And you'll do that on behalf of this organization? Sure, yes, yes. Yeah, and it's, it's certainly, it, we have a much better capacity now to send out an email last to the membership if we find out that something like this is happening and we will, we will certainly do that.